Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you like videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I'd be able to send videos like this to your inbox as soon as tomorrow morning. If you like these watches, you can buy them as a set. We're not selling them solely on our website, thewatchbox.com. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on thewatchbox.com. So why have I arrayed four watches with superimposed masks atop smoked sapphire in 40 millimeter cases? That is because today we are discussing one of the high water marks of Swiss craft arts from the 2000s. This is the Vacheron Constantin Mette d'Art Les Masques Series 3. In 2007, 8, and 9, Vacheron Constantin created four watches per year, 25 copies of each watch for 300 watches total created over the three-year period. Each one was based on a mask representing an actual artifact from global cultures exhibited at the Barbier Muller Museum of Geneva. So each one of these masks has a full-size prototype the likes of which was borrowed by Vacheron's art department and meticulously crafted using miniature painting, miniature sculpting, miniature engraving to produce 100 extraordinary pieces for three consecutive years, and this is the 2009 series. So I'm going to show you each of the watches up close, and then I'm going to do wrist shots at the end with each one. Okay, first, in rose gold, and I should clarify, this is a African mask that is based on a full-size prototype originally found in modern West Gabon, Africa. Now, the timepiece is based on a Vacheron Constantin manufacturer caliber 2460 G4. So, 2460 is the 40-hour automatic base. Geneva Hallmark Absolutely the same level of finish you expect on any Vacheron caliber, but where the game changes for this 4 hertz 40 hour automatic is on the dial side. Now you can see the mask, and you can see that there's actually a somewhat yellow smoked sapphire featuring poetry by Barbier Muller Museum scholar and author Michel Boutour. So that's actually the text you see ghosted onto the yellow smoked sapphire. Below that, you can see that there is a day and a date in French, and the time is displayed in scrolling fashion at roughly 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock on the dial. So it is a day date and a scrolling time display with automatic winding. This one is in rose gold. The series comprises all three primary golds, rose, yellow, and white, plus platinum. So from Rose Gold and West Gabon, that from the Fang culture. We have Tibet. This watch in yellow gold represents Greater China. Now you can see this one features much more elaborate micro engraving, whereas the other Fang Culture Mask represents more miniature painting atop the engraved base. This is an extraordinarily delicate and fine composition. I'm going to get as close as I can so you can see both the miniature painting and the miniature engraving blazing on this dial. It is truly extraordinary, and the amount of time that was put into the series is utterly mind-boggling. It makes movement finishing seem almost quick and easy. And you can see that this yellow gold watch features a smoked sapphire in red as its base. The dial side finishing of the caliber, I should mention, is as handsome, detailed, and careful as the case back itself. And you'll find no lack of a gorgeous engine-turned guilloche grand doge across the rotor perfectly aligned Geneva waves or Cote de Genève across the bridges. You'll also find beautiful grained wheels and mirrored anglage executed not just on the edge of every bridge, but also in every jewel countersink. And you can see the glint and the gleam of that mirrored edge, hand laid with traditional tools on the edges, as well as on the edge of the rotor itself. 
unidirectional winding with ceramic rotor bearings for high efficiency. This is yellow gold and this is tantric Tibetan from China. 16th to 17th century that one. Now this is white gold and the culture represented from Indonesia, island of Lombok, Sasak culture, and this one features a lightly blue tinted sapphire with a white gold case. Now you can see that this one is perhaps one of the easier examples to read. I find that for pure legibility, the Indonesian and the African watches are the most legible for daily wear. And I should also mention that every single one of these watches features a domed sapphire, a dramatically domed sapphire over the mask itself. So while the double-sided anti-reflective coating almost makes it appear as though the mask were on the top of the primary sapphire, there are two layers of sapphire and the masks are entirely shielded. But you get a sense of the three-dimensionality of the masks when you see them from an angle. And it is the domed profile of the upper sapphire that makes it possible to see the gradients, the colors, the painting, the contours, the lines, and the depth, including the variable depth of the engraving used to create textures as well as shading. It's truly extraordinary. And I will review the masks one more time. I'll do another quick flyby so you can see them all from every angle. Now, this one hails from the Americas. Uh, modern day state of Guerrero in Mexico. This one, based on a mask from what is today the state of Guerrero, but vintage to 300 to 100 BC. It features a lightly gray smoked sapphire underneath. And you can see that its coloration, all applied by hand, is extraordinary. And this is a mask representative of the ancient Mezcala culture from the modern day Mexican state of Guerrero. It's also interesting to see an example of a series that gives you both white gold and platinum because it's only when you compare them in very close proximity that you can even tell the difference between the two, with platinum having a slightly whiter tone to it and the white gold being somewhat more muted, not any less shiny because they're all of high polish finish, but somewhat more gray in its profile. So now we'll do the mask flybys. Mexico, modern day state of Guerrero, from every angle. Back to Indonesia, Sasak culture, from every angle. Western Gabon, Fang culture, And finally, Greater China and Tibet. Sixteenth to seventeenth century being the time frame for the original mask. Feel free to pause or rewind at any time. Okay, and now we're going to do wrist shots. You guys should know by now, my wrist is, I'm going to zoom out a little bit to make this possible. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, oval in profile, and the watches measure 40 millimeters in diameter, not inclusive of the crown. Because of the dramatically domed sapphire over each mask, they are 13 millimeters thick, but with a generously rounded case profile, they do slide underneath great any kind of dress cuffs or tight sleeves quite easily. Uh, the lug-to-lug -lug measurement is 46.8, so it's nice and compact, and the lug shape is tightly downturned. So these watches will wear well, in my estimation, on wrists as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. And of course, we're looking at rose gold one more time.
The lug spacing, for those of you who dare to accessorize, is 20 millimeters, and you'll note that the cases are handsome, beautifully rounded with hardly a straight line. The only real straight lines are when viewed perfectly from the side. You see the junction between the bezel and the case band, that's it. The lugs have been broken up with the use of a fluted edge that nicely transitions from the hoods of the lugs to the flats of the sides, and you'll also note that the case forms feature a sharp cleft between the case band and the lug themselves. So the lugs themselves have a beautiful sculptural presence that is separate from the case. These are not traditional Calatrava-style blended lugs. You can see the crown profile, the Maltese cross icon of Vacheron Constantin, and you'll note the pusher adjusters that are used for the day and the date if you wish to adjust them individually. Time at 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock adjusted using the crown. And now we'll jump over to, that was rose gold, this is yellow gold. It's a little bit harsher, it's a little bit more visible. It does give the impression of a slightly larger watch on the wrist. And the nice thing about buying this set is that you will own the set. And you can pick the one to wear that suits your mood, suits the weather. Perhaps if you have a particular skin tone that you feel is most harmonious for a particular metal, you'll be able to choose from among the four. And now Indonesia and white gold. White gold with a distinctly blue tint to the sapphire. You can see that the case band has a wonderful conical profile about the bezel that's even all the way around and completes the tapered form of the case band curvature. I would have to say that of the four, this one or the Mexican mask, the, Mex the Mexican Mezcala culture mask, probably my favorite, and I'm going to actually say this one because the blue smoked sapphire probably takes it for me. I also happen to like the expression. That's kind of me when I walk into SIHH each year. And then finally, platinum. And I can tell you that the watch has an extraordinarily hefty feel on the wrist. You really can tell the difference. Dimensions, model, everything else being equal, you can feel the difference between white gold, yellow gold, rose gold, and then the huge mass delta upward of platinum. Also, we'll take a quick look at the clasp. The design of the clasp is identical across the models. And you can see that unlike some manufacturers today, you do get a platinum clasp on a platinum watch from Vacheron. Each one features a Maltese cross interior chassis with a combination of blasted and polished interior finish, a curvature that nicely matches the underside of the wrist for comfort, and a double fold deployment, which I find is better for a small wrist because it doesn't have the one big up and over fold that can pinch a small wrist in practice. Every single one of them with a full double folding deployment to ensure that you don't drop the watch while donning or removing at bedside. You can see and purchase these watches, but only as a set on the watch box.